Today, I'm changing the rules of English football. So English clubs can only use players from the UK and Ireland. That means any foreign footballers can't play in league matches. So I've removed all non-British players from their clubs and anyone who somehow slipped through the cracks, like Matias Nunes, can't be registered to play. The Premier League Media Dream 11 is a little bit all over the place, especially the back line. But Newcastle are now favourites to win the title and Sheffield United are tipped for a top 10 spot. But what actually happened was Arsenal won the title by 9 points ahead of Man City. Newcastle just missed out on the top four by goal difference. At the other end of the table, Brentford, Palace and Fulham are going down partly due to their reliance on foreign players and partly down to their lack of good English talent. Rashford topped the scoring charts ahead of Bakayo Saka and Mikhail Antonio, who now plays for Liverpool. The best part is they signed him on a free, but that might have been my fault. I might have accidentally released him when I was getting rid of all the other non-English players. The largest transfer was for Dominic Calvert-Lewin, as he leaves Everton to join Newcastle for 45, rising to 61 million. Gio Reyna made the move to Arsenal, and you may think, how is that possible given that he's American? But he was actually born in Sunderland, so does claim England as a second nationality, and as a result, can play at English clubs under the new rules. That's also how Kevin Danso is able to play for Man City after moving from Lens for 33, rising to 45 million. Plus, we're also seeing some of the best English talent playing abroad coming back to the UK, such as Marcus Edwards and Angel Gomez. But when we look at the best players in the database rated by current ability, Haaland has gone to Real Madrid, De Bruyne has gone to Real Madrid, and Mohamed Salah has gone to Real Madrid. If they don't win the Champions League, I will be shocked. The biggest clubs affected in the Championship were Leeds, Southampton and Leicester. Having just been relegated, they still had a lot of foreign players, but it clearly hasn't affected them, as they all finished in the top three, with Leicester just missing out on the playoffs. As we drop further down the pyramid, the less effect the new rules have, as most players at lower levels are English, and so as a result, League One doesn't look outrageous, although there's no way Bolton, Wigan and Peterborough should be that far down the table. There was only nine points between first and 10th in League Two, a lot of those teams will feel like they should be getting promoted instead of the four clubs who did. And as we get to the National League, I don't think these new rules will have had any significant impact. As Gateshead beat York to the title, Boston lose in the National North playoffs after losing the title to Scunthorpe, and Yeovil begin their climb back up the leagues after winning the National South title. Heading to the very elite of European football though, only Manchester United and Newcastle made it to the last 16 of the Champions League and both of them lost. Man City and Arsenal came third in their groups and dropped to the Europa League where Man City beat Arsenal in the final. But Aston Villa lost in the last 16 of the Europa Conference League. So based on what we've seen so far, I'd like to make three predictions for the rest of the video. The Premier League will drop behind the other big five European leagues. Every club in England will now put a huge priority on youth development. And as a result, England, Scotland and Ireland will all win World Cups within the 50 years this video covers. Now to track this, I'm keeping a tally of each league's average facilities, junior recruitment and academy coaching. And this graph shows the averages at the end of season one. All three of these metrics are rated out of 20, so the Premier League is obviously very high and the National League is very low. We should see an upward trend as clubs look to develop the facilities to get better players coming through to progress up the leagues. And because there is such an emphasis on youth development, coupled with players from England and Ireland and Scotland playing more games because they're forced to because they can't bring other players in, it's going to mean these players are going to get better and it should mean the national teams will win more. At least that's what I'm predicting. So let's jump to season five and see what's going on. Man City have just won their second Premier League title in a row after Arsenal won the title in the first three seasons. The main thing I've noticed is the most out of the ordinary team in the league is Norwich. And given they've been in the Premier League a lot over the last decade, it's not very unusual. I thought we might start to see a few lower league teams break into this division. Albert Lewin looks to have been a good purchase for Newcastle, as he ends up as the top scorer. And somehow it's taken until now for Tammy Abraham to make his return to England, as Arsenal splash almost £100 million on the striker. But by this point, anyone English playing abroad has been bought as all the other transfers are between English teams. These three players 
in Man City's title winning lineup are regens. And this really points towards my prediction that there is a huge emphasis on youth development and points towards England, Scotland and Ireland all winning a World Cup. Jordan Gambling came through at Fulham and was bought for 22 and a half million. But Adam Rees was developed by Man City and sent out on loan to Troyes, as was Neil Hoskins, who also had a loan spell at Luton Town. And if you're interested, Man City broke the world record transfer fee for Jude Bellingham to steal him from Real Madrid. And City's stacked team actually took them all the way to the Champions League final, where they lost to Barcelona, who have now won five in a row. Who would have thought that in a video where I ban anyone who's not from the UK and Ireland from playing in England, that the most unrealistic thing about it would be Barcelona winning five Champions Leagues in a row. The only players who had to leave England who are a part of Barcelona's starting lineup from the final are Moises Caicedo, Alexander Rizak and Rasmus Hoyland. We've also just seen Leicester and Spurs win the Europa Conference League. So maybe I was actually wrong. English clubs will do just fine in Europe and continue to win as much as they did before, especially as Leicester have won that whilst also finishing second in the championship. Grimsby have also done well getting into the championship but are being relegated, but Oxford United are my star team as they miss out on promotion to the Premier League in the playoff final. Blackburn are on the decline as they finish 13th in League One, seemingly unable to make good transfers or develop young players. Bolton and Barnsley will be frustrated to be in League Two, but at least Bolton are heading back up. But arguably, Leighton Orient have done the worst, dropping from League One into the National League within four seasons, but they are getting back promoted in Season 5. So as we head forward to Season 15, let's look at some data. The Premier League is seeing a huge increase in the quality of their facilities, which makes sense as they have the most money to invest. But there was also an increase for League One clubs from Season 1 to 5, but things have slowly declined heading into Season 15. Youth recruitment has in general declined across the board, but the youth facilities are being held back by some outliers. Swansea only have a youth facility rating of 4 out of 20, and so do Sheffield Wednesday. In Swansea's case, they scrapped their youth setup three seasons ago, which means they've had to start again from scratch. As for Sheffield Wednesday, they actually sold their facilities, and so have had to rebuild them again from the start. They must have been in some serious money issues if that's what they had to do to keep afloat. The National League is seeing a continual decline in its youth facilities, partly because if a club has good facilities to develop players, they're more likely to get promoted, but also because they are just really expensive to invest in and clubs at that level just will not have the spare money. But they are still looking to improve their academy coaching and youth recruitment, which is on an upward trend. Man City have won the Premier League title as we enter the realm of regens with Evan Ferguson and Jude Bellingham sitting behind regens in goals and assists. This is the stage where we're going to see the fruits of good youth development benefit those clubs. Although it looks like the good youngsters are staying at the original Premier League clubs, as only Norwich seem to have avoided being relegated after getting promoted. Rico Lewis, Jude Bellingham, Alex Scott and Evan Ferguson are the only real-life players left in the Man City squad. And across all clubs, there's a lot less transfer activity, given how limited the squads can be, which has also led to a massive reduction in spending as clubs only sign the very best regens for big money. But they're making a lot of good ones. The England team ranked by current ability looks absolutely stacked, with only three players below 160 current ability, which is ranked out of 200. So anything over 150 is a good Premier League level, and anything over 170 is world class. We'll come back at the end of the video to see what England as a team have won over the 50 years. The championship now features a real mix of teams, from champions Everton to relegated Wrexham. The Wrexham squad is interesting, as they have a much higher percentage of Welsh players coming through their youth academy, but in this instance, they don't have many good ones. The same applies to Cardiff, but they seem to have some better Irish players than they do Welsh players. We seem to have more change in League One, with the likes of Bromley, Halifax, Torquay and Scunthorpe making their way up the ladder. In Season 5, we saw Grimsby in the Championship, but now they're back in League 2 in Season 15, as Preston, who have won the title, have also dropped down from the Championship. But not as far as Plymouth, who find themselves 16th in the National League, ahead of Stevenage in 23rd, who have fallen down from League 1. 
Interestingly, Plymouth's facilities are rated 1 out of 20, so I guess they can't develop anyone good. But Stevenage actually have some of the best facilities in the league, so I have no idea what their excuse is for being this bad. It's taken some time, but English clubs are now back on top in the Champions League, as Man City and Spurs win. Although Barcelona have now won 8 out of a possible 15. Manchester United have now won 4 Europa Leagues. And with Arsenal's win, English clubs have now won 6 out of the 15 finals. And we've also seen 6 winners in the Conference League. So my prediction that English teams would drop off isn't coming true. And as a result, the Premier League is still number one in European coefficients, meaning they get the maximum number of teams qualifying for Europe every single season. So maybe not all of my predictions are gonna come true, so I'm gonna make one more that will come true. All of you are going to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Please. By season 30, almost every Premier League club has maxed out their facilities, which seems bonkers to me. We would have a perfect 20 for youth recruitment, but Reading only have 17 across the board for their infrastructure, and Stoke are a huge anomaly with just 12 for youth recruitment and they don't actually have any youth training facilities. They sold them in 2049, and now four years later, they've not bothered to buy them back or build a new one. As for League One, we have seen a decline in youth facilities. But again, there are two clubs bringing down the average. Burnley's facilities are rated one out of 20 because last season they scrapped the youth setup and have only just started to rebuild them. QPR also have a one rated facility because they did the exact same thing, but they did it 20 years ago and haven't bothered to do anything about it since. But academy coaching and youth recruitment is up on average again. And there has been a huge increase in the youth facilities in the National League, as by this stage, clubs have saved up enough money to start improving them. The Premier League is now starting to look a little different, as Liverpool and Arsenal are now only mid-table teams, and Norwich are pushing for Champions League football. But Man City are still the team to beat as they win their 15th title of the video. Interestingly, the very best player in the Premier League is French. He was born there, but must have an English parent, as he has English as a second nationality. But the very best English player in the database actually plays for Barcelona, after they bought him from Brighton, where he developed for 113 million. Everton have just been relegated from the championship down to League One. Other current Premier League sides like Southampton and Wolves seem to be stuck at this level. Everton have actually dropped into League One a couple of times before, but they do have good youth infrastructure, so it seems like a combination of poor management, transfers, and the selling of the training facilities are to blame. Burnley will be taking their place, as they get promoted from League One, beating Bromley to the automatic promotion spots. Quite the opposite to Everton, Bromley have average facilities at best, so their success, which has seen them become a yo-yo club between the Championship and League One, must be down to good management and great transfer policy. But it's Luton who have dropped the furthest, as they sit just 15th in League Two, where quite a few current non-league clubs sit ahead of them in the table. It looks like Luton never really invested in their facilities, which goes a long way to explaining their demise. Preston and Bolton still have the best facilities in the National League, but they're not as good as football league clubs, which partly explains why they've dropped off. Another reason might be because they are so close to Manchester, and if they do get someone good coming through their academy, they're gonna get poached by Man City and Man United instead. Only Chelsea and Man City have won the Champions League since we last looked at the competition. So I do think the inability to sign the very best foreign players has limited English clubs in this competition, but not the Europa League. As since our last visit, five English teams have won the tournament, and another five have won the Conference League. So, as a result, England still sits pretty on top of the European coefficient table. Finally, we're at season 50, and interestingly, the average Premier League youth facility has declined. But that's only because Southampton's facilities are rated 4 out of 20. They sold them 15 years ago and haven't upgraded them much since. They're also the only team in the Premier League that doesn't have 20 out of 20 for youth recruitment. So, as always, Southampton just ruined everything. Interestingly, League One has had a slight decline in its averages. Although this data only features 23 teams because somehow Leicester have a minus one for their facilities. They sold their youth facilities 19 years ago 
and have since scrapped their youth setup completely. Interestingly, they've got a senior squad here full of players, but the under 21 squad, no one, and the under 18 squad, no one. Stockport and Swansea also bring down the averages as they both have ones for their youth facilities. But the National League once again has had a steady increase in the average quality of their facilities. But it's not as dramatic as I thought it was going to be, aside from the Premier League clubs who just have money to burn. The level of upgrades we've seen there is way more than you'd see in a normal database 50 years in the future. But I do think overall, we can tick this prediction off the list as I think it came true. West Ham have just won their first title ahead of Manchester United, who have won 11 of the last 15 seasons. Liverpool are lucky to escape relegation on goal difference. Charlton missed out on promotion back to the Premier League in the playoffs, whilst Everton have now become an established championship team in 16th. Despite Leicester's non-existent facilities, they've won the League One title with Brentford all the way down in 14th. Luton are on their way back up after lifting the League Two title, whereas Burnley are 10 points away from being relegated into non-league. Annoyingly for me as a Lincoln City fan, they're down in the National League, with only Stevenage dropping further from the current League One teams. Until you get to the National North, where Fleetwood sit in 14th place, and Wickham are champions of the National South, ahead of Cheltenham, who are in 15th place. In the last 20 seasons, we've seen three English winners of the Champions League, but quite a few losing finalists, including West Ham. There's also been a bit of a slowdown in the Europa League, with only five winners in the last 20 seasons. But nine of the last 20 seasons have resulted in an English winner of the Conference League. So based on this, English clubs did not drop off in European competitions. They perhaps didn't have the same success as they would have done if they could have signed any player in the world, but they have been able to stay on top of the European coefficient rankings for a vast majority of the video. So now to that final prediction. Did England, Scotland and Ireland win a World Cup? No. England did get to one final in 2066, but they lost to France. And that's the same level of achievement as Romania, Serbia and Colombia. I feel very let down. England have gone on to win four European Championships though, and Scotland did come runners up in 2064. But I think I might have just been a little bit ambitious with this prediction. But even more ambitious is restarting Paul Pogba's career. I wanted to see if putting a 17-year-old Pogba back at the start of his career would result in him having an even more successful time than he did in real life. Minus the doping ban, of course. It's on screen for you to watch right now, so go check it out.